80 milliseconds too late. The SSA Rocket League podcast, a name to which I'm not completely married, but with a a a poll on Twitter, it was it was a very close vote, but it did come out on top. So for the time being, that is it. Um, and and as the inaugural podcast, and I really really hope this has legs. But I've got with me the casters who just cast the winter split regional one over the weekend. So on this side, I've got Ultrism. And on that side, I've got Murs. Gentlemen, hello. Hello. I, I love the name, dude. I actually genuinely like it because anyone who grew up playing on European servers knows exactly what that feels like. They know, they know the pain. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, but you know, Ryan, I was kind of leading towards Packet Loss and Ping. You know, that really kind of had a zing and just rolled off the tongue, as you had said. You know, uh, you know? it rolls off the tongue very nicely. It just didn't yeah. get the vote, so here we are. Nah. All right, guys. So listen, let's not let's not waffle about too much. Let's see if we can get a lot of info in pretty pretty damn quick. And we have to talk first up, first and foremost. Are we entering a new era of Rocket League in South Africa? Orlando Pirates losing in a major competition for the first time in what? At least two years, maybe three years, maybe four, maybe forever. What do you guys think? Alt, let's start with you. Oh, man. Like you said, Orlando Pirates has had such a reputation behind them. They have been an incredible team and they've changed their roster a couple of times. You know, CP Zebra jumping out into the co the coach role was a big change for them, but not a devastating change. They brought in Skill Steel, who was such an incredible incredibly good player one of the highest ranked people in south africa and the the team synergy just grew from there looking so strong and it really came down to they were number one and then there was the argument about kind of who trickled in after them but they kind of dominated every tournament they got knocked down to the lower bracket once in the last four years and then suddenly we get bravado managing to take them and in two series in a row four games to two it really does now open up the opportunity and it's the most exciting thing that we've seen because it means that South African Rocket League has grown to the point where there are so many teams starting to come up and actually challenge. And considering the first split, the four split, Bravado didn't even win all of those or even come second in mm. all of those. ATK threatened them as well. So Bravado has already pipped them. Who else is coming up next? All right. Well, that's okay. So, so the, there's two parts to the story. One, the shock of Orlando Pirates not winning, not winning a tournament. But we have to give massive credit, Muzz, Bravado. I mean, they've been nipping at the heels, and we all expected them at some point uh, to possibly take one. But I don't think any of us were expecting were expecting it in this, the very first regional. So, big up to Bravado. Your thoughts, Muzz. I mean, yeah, I don't think we're expecting it kind of at all this soon, but they definitely, as you said, were nipping at the heel. They kind of, if it was going to be any team to do it, it was going to be bravado gaming, right? Mm. We look at how skilled the team is. We're always bragging about to die for 16-year-old player that's so mechanically strong, doing so incredibly well, obviously backed up by Daisy and Happy Meal. And this team kind of, it was inevitable that uh, Orlando Pirates XD would eventually lose. But I mean, to lose in the upper bracket first and then also lose again in a grand final as well, you, you lost twice to Bravado basically on the same weekend. And that kind of, we don't see from them. We've watched kind of XD in local tournaments fall down to lower bracket and then just wipe everyone and still win the final because that's XD, you know, Michael will say, they do not lose. And kind of here it was just you know if we thought that reverse sweep from royalty was good it's like mm. oh my god you know bravado winning regional one of winter split just the holiday obviously did something so good for this team because hell upper bracket series great you know they clowned on mm. xd got to the final didn't even need that bracket reset clowned on xd and just we 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 needed that as a region because I think we've watched XD be such a dominant team for the last four years that we've really really needed kind of the 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 runners up to actually take that kind of crown off of them. Well, it became a blowout a blowout tournament, didn't it? I mean, up until halfway through, well, up until the last series on Saturday, it was. I mean, it, there was good Rocket League, but it was pretty boring in terms of the results. <laughs> were all going to type all in a sweep. Sweep after yeah. sweep after sweep. And three games in with that royalty game, it looked like it was another one. And then suddenly everything just went nuts with that reverse sweep. And then uh, oh. and then royalty again, doing it to DNMK the next day. And then the ridiculousness of, of Bravado and, and uh, Orlando Pirates. So, 
So you're quite right, Maz. I mean, incredibly important for the for the region to for things to be upset and for it to be uncertain. But altruism is this. Do you think it's a one-off, or do you think bravado? Uh, do you think they're going to go on and take every regional, or Orlando Pirates going to come back? Is it one-off, or is there more sustainability in in this new paradigm? And I don't think that it has completely overturned the scene. And this is the the new meta that's going to come out from now on. I don't think Bravado is going to hand league club every team in the country. I still think they need to be watching their back against so many teams that's coming up. You know, when we looked at that first split, it was Orlando Pirates number one, ATK and Bravado number two, and then a massive deficit between them and any of the other teams coming up. And it was something that we did see this last weekend. You talked about those sweeps coming through there. The fact that there were so many blowouts does show you that there is still that mm. chasm. But the fact that you're starting to have a couple more teams starting to surmount those walls around them is really good news. We saw the first Reunion Island team being able to start making a name for themselves. PWB came in there making, I think it was top five or top six, um, eventually going down to that reverse sweep. And so they looked strong already, like you say, into that third game. They looked so good. The fact that you've got DNMK, who's still there and thereabouts in the top four, top five seeds. You've got ATK still hanging around looking dangerous. And ATK has been a team that has been able to challenge Bravado before. So whether this is just the one time Bravado is able to take it off Orlando Pirates, I doubt it. You know, the long bit of training between these two splits has obviously paid off for them. They started to change their mindset where they were, they took that impetus away from Orlando Pirates. They didn't play according to the Orlando Pirates XD game style. They did. We, we had that interview with Happy Meal afterwards. They went in with their own game plan. Mm. And I love to see that. If we can get some other teams going, what are we strong at? How do we bring this up? Yeah, I think that Bravado is going to hang around. I definitely think going into the next one in two weeks' time that there's going to be a much bigger rivalry between those te two teams. And I wouldn't put money now on who's actually going to take that because I still don't think that either one has really pulled mm. away from it or if this was just a one-off bounce from Bravado. Well, I think I, I, it's a point well made. And I do, th the big takeaway for me coming out of the weekend was uh, the gap between one and two had got very, very narrow. But it does seem the gap between one, two, and three and four has suddenly widened. Like the, the middle sections are probably drawing closer together, but it seems like Bravado and, or, and Orlando have pulled further ahead. But either way, I mean, an outstanding performance. Happy meal to die for, Daisy. You know, they knocked it out of the park, so big up to them. And I did I did have a chat while on Discord. I reached out to the Orlando Pirates guys, and I was, and they seem to be taking it in their stride. Uh, Darth said he's going to take a couple of days off and then hit the grind running. Uh, Snowy was just, he was quite frustrated that he said every time they won a game, they then seem to forget their game plan in the, in the very next game and then lose. So, you know, for him, that was something to work on. And then... Skill Steel said he is he's he's really pleased that that Bravado are pushing them as hard as they are because they need a team that does that to push them to be even better. You know, it doesn't help just to be the best all the time. You you don't not necessarily improving. So I thought there was a good response from each of those guys. So so keen to see how they bring it out. But Muz, let's talk for now. I mean, uh, Alt, you were talking about DNMK and AT and ATK. This was a tough weekend for them. Royalty has come and kind of cocked it up a little bit, Muzz. And, you know, the, the top four were pretty settled. And now this royalty team arrives and, and causing a bit of consternation. Yeah, I mean, what I kind of like about what's happening here, Ryan, is that royalty for me is replicating exactly what all listed during the first split. Very much an up-and-coming team. No one had really heard of them. You know, Friction and kind of Blackstar, they've been playing the six mans there around. But I didn't expect such a huge performance from them where they're mm. finishing in the quarters and semifinals royalty did absolutely that for me this winter split they finished third that makes such a fantastic lower bracket run mm. and they give the reverse sweep to atk as well which no one expected phenomenal stuff right so now this roster finishes third in their first uh regional right their bag of very important 260 points towards the rlcs right in their first time i mean that is just phenomenal stuff right and so I think what we're getting out of this region right now and the fact that, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa has been thrown kind of uh, a couple bones here by Sionics is that hungry teams and hungry players mm. are emerging. And the fact that Royalty could pip DNMK and ATK and finish third above both of them is phenomenal stuff, right? 
um, and we've looked at a Lycom and we've looked at kind of, you know, Eugene and Zero and we know these players. Um, and maybe we, I kind of feel like on Friday, no one would have expected a third place finish from them. But I mean, Hell's Bells, they absolutely mm. impressed everyone and did so phenomenally well. And I think kind of, you know, chef's kiss to you, third place is great <laughs> stuff. That yeah. kind of hunger comes out. Mm. I mean, hell, you lost to XD4-1 uh, in the group stages that took one game off of them as well. So mm. royalty can take two games off of XD, which was very much like our kind of Goliath team. Mm. Now they're kind of getting games taken off them by any other team. You know, this is kind of the competition we need here and we want to see that. That's what, I, what I'd like to say, just on, on that point of royalty quickly, is royalty came in as a brand new team, but it's not brand new players. Yes. Yes. Eugen, um, Zero, and uh, it was Eliakim are mm. all very well known in the scene. They have been up and coming players for the last couple of years. And this, I said it a couple of times in the stream, is a distilled version of some of the best teams in South Africa. They pulled people from individually good teams and really put them together. What could be nice is to see if they can carry on growing. You know, they did come in and they did really challenge some of the other big teams. They managed to take ATK 4-3 in that sweep. They took 4-2 against DNMK. So they've proven themselves a couple of the really good teams. Apex as well was one of the new teams that we saw with some good players in it, and they beat them 3-1. They took 3-0 versus Lost Legion. So they've slowly worked their way, or very quickly, in fact, worked their way up those ladders. But what was big to me was that they still went down 4-1 to Pirates mm -hmm. XD. And this is what you were talking about. 1 and 2 have cemented themselves, but 3 is now trailing behind by quite a lot. Whether the, the fact that there is now a little bit of time to start practicing for the rest of these regional splits means that they can start pulling together. Maybe they just didn't have enough time to really um, cohese, at, cohese, I'm sure that's a word, as okay. a team is, is, is interesting. I'm, I'm very excited to see whether the three individually skilled players that use their individual skills to carry them to this point are now going to be able to close that next gap and whether there's going to be any more teams behind them or if they're just going to be the top of the rest. Okay, but now this brings up a... a something else for me which I find quite interesting and, and, and I mentioned it a few times not to harp on it but, but I think it's a factor. Royalty uh, on average is the second oldest team in the entire thing and that's mostly because Eugen's late 20s uh, Zero's mid 20s and then there's the young Eli Kim but, um, and I don't know how much a factor that's going to be going forward you know we saw the very young teams didn't do that well in, in particular Barney and his dinosaurs who are incredibly young, 15 years old and 17 years old. But how much is a factor, is that a factor for the long-term sustainability of a team like Royalty? Uh, I mean, yeah. Like, I don't know, it depends. Like, is esports very similar to a, to a traditional sport in that aspect that, like, once you're 30, it's kind of like, you know, you're over the hill and you're going to kick the curb. Mm -hmm. But then we've watched Zebra be 30. He was still playing very competitively. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of tough to say. Um, you know, I think we also kind of one kind of um, player from the Dota analogy, if I can bring that across, is we don't know the future kind of potential age of players just mm. yet because mm. we haven't seen esports have the same type of length and longevity as a traditional sport. So let's say 15 or 20 years have passed for esports in total. We don't know how far players can go yet. So now, you know, you could still be 30 and win in world champs. You know, we look at kind of Justin, Garrett G, these guys. Are they going to get to 25, 30 years old and still be winning world champs? Or is it kind of you're washed when you get to that age when it comes to esports? I, I think we don't know that yet. And we have to see still what the next kind of half a decade can bring. Um, and then those type of answers can slowly get, um, or sorry, those kind of questions can slowly get answered. Um, so it's so probably so it's probably too early in the South African scene for us to oh, know yeah. how much of a factor no, that is so, so. far. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the big thing as well to, to understand is, like Maz says, is we don't know if you have to retire 25, you know, if your reactions, there have been a couple of studies saying that, you know, your reaction starts slowing down. But when with that, if, you, if you've been playing Rocket League for 10 years at that stage, that game knowledge, that mechanical prowess, if you've put in 5,000 hours, sure, you get slightly slower, but you read the ball better, you read the plays better. And so that kind of 
it, it's not your muscles that are, are carrying you anymore. It's your ability. It's your thought processes. And what happens then is if we can keep these older players, these older generation of people still actively in the scene, and then you've got, you know, teams like Unity, who was the team who actually won the high school esports league coming up. You've got the To Die Fours coming up. You've got the Echoes coming up there at 18 years old, 16 years old. Mm. You now start to coalesce a much wider range. You're going to start having people at 35 to 50 starting to play together and I don't think that there's any other sport in the world that could really boast that and so like you say it's too early to tell if someone's going to have to go out but I think that there's at least the potential that that game knowledge that ability that mentality can stick around if there is reason for them to do it fair enough okay well you mentioned echo in there alt and 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 that brings a, a topic I wanted to touch on is we made quite a big deal about how much Echo's been grinding and he's 10, 12, 13 hours a day or whatever the ridiculous figure is, is he's grinding. And, and for that amount of effort, they'll be very disappointed with the result. And I'm wondering what, what that team should be looking at because with all of that effort and in my chat with Casper, the interview we did, I think he's doing at least six or eight hours. Uh, they've got to be disappointed with that result. I mean disappointed because i think when you can when you're a competitive play you kind of want to be the best and you want to have that podium finish so they finish fourth right doesn't get you onto the podium but you know what they've been doing still so well during the fall split that top four still kind of in my mind a very decent finish for them they bagged 220 points towards the rlcs right that's already a kind of on to what they've received throughout the whole of the fall split ryan obviously very decent and you know sure we're looking at echo he's grinding he's putting in like 10 to 12 hours a day whatever the case might be and casper was talking about like a seven to eight um you know these are kind of very long individual hours and kind of i know everyone on the panel and kind of we were saying well is this also something replicated by the team They've kind of talked about the mixed coach and they get his on and off. It's come on, It's kind of not someone that's dedicated to the team per se. And then they kind of maybe are doing two or three hours of kind of team practice. And we don't know if that includes scrims, whatever the case might be. So it's tough for us to say. We've, we've got the outside look, don't we? So we, we probably don't even know what type of kind of hours the team puts in as a whole. But we know that certain individuals on the team are putting in extreme individual hours. So do you think so so do, do you think they have a problem or was it just a bad a bad day of Rocket League? Could have been a bad day at Rocket League. I think also no one expected Royalty to have such a good run through that lower bracket. So I kind of I think that's a, it's definitely both of those things, Ryan. I think it's Royalty having a really decent day. Um and DNMK obviously just maybe weren't up to that scratch right now. So remember that kind of December break and between regionals was good for a lot of teams and obviously might have been not so decent for teams. I mean, we watched ATK fall down and they were mm. second on the rankings, right? We watched DNMK fall down. Apex remembers that old Auglis side, which were, we're talking about again, quarters and semifinals. They went and fell out even before ATK. So mm. now, you know, we're watching kind of a lot of teams that played in the fall split have just quite a bad lower bracket run, Apex, ATK, and DNMK, right? And Royalty just kind of really swept through that whole bunch and even had quite a decent time against XD. So, you know, definitely two sides to that coin there. Decent play from other teams' opposition and maybe DNMK just having a bit of a rougher weekend and maybe okay. more team synergy might be needed kind of before Regional 2. All right, cool. Well, then let's. Uh, the last question I'd like us to take it. We had two non South African teams. The, the guy, Alt mentioned them, the two teams from Reunion Island. We had PWB and OFA. OFA didn't do that well, but PWB had a good run. And I had a little chat with them, and they are so pumped to get back here for the next regional. But how do we? I mean, it's a bit of an anomaly. The, I mean, that is literally the smallest region within the region that managed to get two teams here. How are we going to get more representation from the broader region and i don't know if there is an answer and it's not necessarily our job but 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 damn i'd love to see a lot more people in, involved i mean you, you know ryan that is so tough because it's extremely difficult you know we've looked at elf try reach out they're struggling we've looked at noob slice try reach out they're struggling it's kind of like how do we get even a foot in the door or just one contact in any one of these other countries. Like, you know, can mm. we get a Namibian team? Is there a Zambian team, a Zimbabwean team? Do you get a Mozambican team? Um, it just seems so incredibly tough to try to find these guys. And like you said, one tiny island on the other side of Madagascar can field two teams in the main event. 
um, and, and, and even have one of them uh, in PWB go through to a lower bracket quarterfinals. They had a, such a decent run. Um, I actually think, you know, their place in ends up in fifth place, right? So they did phenomenally well. Um, and like you said, we don't have to answer that question, but I think it's tough for the guys that are trying to do it. When you look at head admins again, noob slice is, you know, how do we get that one contact in these different countries and try kind of, you know, lure them into um, sub-Saharan Africa mm. as a region to play? And then also what are their ping issues? Because obviously all games are on South African servers, right? So, you know, do the rest of the teams feel a bit kind of jaded? We're always going to be on 150 ping to suit the South Africans. What's kind of, I don't know, mm. is there bitterness then towards us after that? I doubt it, but you know, you kind of know how, I don't know. Well, you know, that's, that's, that's definitely an issue that we want to we want to address as we go forward. But on the plus size side, and to kind of wrap this up, what I'm loving, Muz, is that the fact that we can have a conversation. We're talking about sub-Saharan Africa as a region, RLCS. I mean, we are already a light year ahead of where we were at, at, at the middle of last year, where we thought, well, you know, we were going to slowly die as a region, but here we are. So there's going to be lots of teasing problems, and we're going to have to solve all of these. But I'm thrilled. We, we can have a conversation about our second split, the first regional, and, and incredible things happening. And, and this fairly brief episode has been a summation, I guess, of what happened over the weekend. Um, a little bit of chat about what might be happening. Um, a, a little bit scuffed for the first episode, as we might expect. Alt disappeared in the middle. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I'm assuming he has internet issues on his side. But there you go. And and this this is intended to be everything Rocket League for Sub-Saharan Africa. So I, I want it to be guided by the people who, who do listen to it. What do you want to know about? Get in touch. In the description will be my Discord, my Twitter. Get in touch and DM me on things you think we should be covering, players we should be highlighting, people we should be interviewing. What should we be discussing? What does the community need to know? But uh, in the meantime, for now, that's going to be it for the first episode of 180 milliseconds too late. Myself, Greybeard, and with me, Muzz, and with us for a short while, Ultrism. And uh, hopefully we'll get him back sometime soon. But it's. Uh, it's been good. I hope you find it interesting. Do let us know. Muggs, thank, Muzz, thanks for coming to hang out. Cool. Peace out. Thanks, brother. Peace.